How's it going people? Welcome back to The Pointless Polo Project. Sorry about my voice, it sounds awful because I spent the whole last week in Norfolk shouting and screaming. This is kind of a pre-intro to the actual intro but I felt like it was absolutely necessary considering my channel has started to gain a few more subscribers in the last week. Since I've gone away I went from 116 subscribers on the Friday that I left to 232 at the time of making this video or something like that. So obviously in the last video I thanked everyone for 100 subscribers and now I'm out here on over 200 and I was planning on doing a thank you for 200 so thank you for 200. Don't know why the channel is getting so many subscribers so quickly but it's super cool to see and glad that the hard work is paying off. Thanks to everyone that supported the channel, really rate all the comments, I'll throw a few more. I really enjoyed that like little popping thing, you're going to see loads of pops right now. Thanks for the support, thanks for the comments, loads of DMs, that kind of stuff. People enjoying the polo project, people enjoying the top five videos. Going to endeavour to do loads more like that in the future so stay tuned and hopefully I can bring all the breadth and variety of car content that your heart could possibly desire. Uh, anyway, without further ado, let's get into the actual video. As part of the Pointless Polo project, as I said in the last video, one of the key issues in my car that is kind of stopping me from living throughout this really, really over the top heat wave is the fact that my heaters don't work. So here, let's have a look, let's turn the old car on. Uh, so, as you can see, um, work doesn't work on one, doesn't work on two, doesn't work on three, does work on four. So, uh, yeah, so the key issue with this is the fact that the resistor or the thing that regulates the blowers has broken. That's the, like behind this right here, which is really, really, really annoying. So, I've never done this before, but I'm going to give it a go anyway, just going to see if I can fix it, make it better. And uh, apparently, it's quite an easy fix. Uh, I'll give you a step by step guide thought I'd switch my guides up and the, switch the Pointless Polo project up as well to being face to face, like face to camera, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. Loads more stuff to come. If you watch the last video, you'll see all the things that are wrong with my car that I'm going to be fixing. And then after I've fixed my car, I'm going to do some really sick stuff to it. We're going to make it look unreal, potentially turn it into something that it was supposed to be when it was born, because it's a great car. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into the video. So this is the replacement resistor. You can see on the end here, there's the little resistor and yeah, the whole unit is important for this job. Uh, so you can buy them. <clears throat> I got this on Amazon for £7.19 with Amazon Prime, which is sick. So it came day afterwards. This is the code that you want. You want a 6Q09592632A or 263. I think both of them are the same or interchangeable. So that's what you want. And just for your information, I didn't actually mention it whilst I was recording it in the first place, but you also want a T20 Torx key. They are obviously invaluable to this project because you can't open anything without it. The first step to this job is simply to remove stuff from your glove box. So even though no one ever has gloves in their glove boxes, you need to remove whatever it is that you've got in there because it will go flying out. I've got my 3D glass so I can go to... Uh, th th what even is... What is this? What? If someone can tell me what that is, that'd be very, very helpful. It's got wires and stuff. This is something that's important for the car. What? So under here, you have got theoretically, if I can see them, oh, here we go. So you've got three of these T20 torque wrench bolts. So you see it fits in nicely just about there. Um, so you've got one, two, and three. So you want to get rid of those first and foremost. So I should do that now. So yeah, as you would have just seen, that popped out really easily. No biggie, there's sort of three little tabs there that you're gonna to wanna to pop it back into when it's when you're putting it back together. Uh, and then, if I just drop under here super quick, I believe there are a few more. I thought I forgot a little light, I forgot about that. Um, so, under here somewhere, they're supposed to, here we go. So you've got one, two, and three more of these T20s you need to remove, I believe. I don't know if it's even necessary to be honest, but I, apparently it is, so we'll do that next. Let's do that now. So I ran into a slight issue. This bit here, when you're removing the torque screws from inside, oh, there we go, there's one out. So here's my T20 and the bit that I would usually use hang on about, to put it in would be this that obviously doesn't fit in here like you can't get to any of the bolts which is really annoying but 
um, I have worked a way around it. You, you're going to want to have sort of uh, the Allen key looking ones, but instead just use this and it works. If it works, it works in my opinion. <laughs> I'm gonna lie, uh, after you've done it once with the old uh, pliers, the rest of it's pretty easy. Like, you can finger tighten it. This one's being a bit more stubborn now, but mostly it's. Uh, let's get the picture here. My beautiful face. Where am I? There I am. Hello. Uh, so, yeah, once, uh, once you get it through there, it's pretty easy. Ooh. No, I, I lied. It's not. I absolutely lied. Let's do a couple more twists with the old pliers. Right, so I just removed this bad boy here, this bad boy here, and this bad boy right here. So once all three of those are out, theoretically, yeah, so you can see this is a... Uh, almost in a position now where it can come out. I'm, I'm not really sure when it comes out, but it should be coming out any second now. All right, so I think I've figured it out. Basically, you uh, get, a li get a hand under here, give it a little pull, and obviously if you'd had stuff in here previously, it would have been over the floor by now, but because I didn't, it just fell out nice and easy on its own. So that's that bit done. And then once you've got that out, you've got all this nice little cladding in here to ensure that you don't kill yourself on all the electrical wires and things. So you want to pull that out just so that you can get a look in there. So now it's gonna be a little bit more difficult for me to show you what's going on, but hopefully my light comes on. There it is, look at that bad boy. I'm loving this light, this is sick. Maybe I won't replace my camera in the near future. But yeah, once you come in here, you see this little thing here, I'll pop a little circle around it on screen as because I can't move my hand right now because I'm holding up this bad boy right here. But uh, yeah, so that needs to come out. So as you can see, there's sort of two little clips. Let's zoom in a little bit on that. Sorry if this is a little bit shaky. So there's sort of little clips on the side. You wanna pull those clips out uh, and then pull it out from there. So I'm gonna do that right now and you're gonna hopefully see me do it. Um, oh, hello, that's literally on my face. Um, no, so basically realized that it was kind of difficult to get out using only my fingers. So get a nice little flathead, you see that there. And uh, just literally go underneath it and pry it out and it will pop out super nice. Or at least it did for me and hopefully it will for you too, I don't know. So there we have it. So this has to get pulled out from there. I'll just re-explain it because I didn't really explain it very well. Basically got my flathead because now, now it's out, I can actually show you. I got my flathead, put it in here, popped it out, so it pops out from here, right? Up here, you can see there's a sort of a loom of wires. Uh, that's obviously holding this in place. I fiddled it out using the little side, sort of like here and here, using my fingers, obviously, not the flathead. Uh, and then from that point, you kind of just pull on, tugged on the wires a little bit, got it out, got it nice and loose, and then turned it to this kind of angle, so that it's a bit like this. So it's kind of like sideways and then pulled it out through like that. That was the only way I could really get it out of the position. And uh, clearly you can see that there's a, a lot of cracking and it's, yeah, it's a little bit old and tired and worn out. So I'm hoping, and it's a bit rusty as well. Yeah, I'm hoping that uh, when I replace this now, it's all a lot better and everything works. So yeah, let's do that. First job is to remove this from the wiring loom, which I believe you just hold these two top tabs and uh, give it a little tug. Grab the loom on these two edges. There we go. So that was a slightly more effort than I expected it to be, but just grabbing these two little edges of the loom and then pulling it out. So uh, yeah, hang on, let's uh, zoom out of that so you can have a look at me instead. Me and my uh, new, well, old, Resistor, so yeah, this is what the resistor looks like. My hair it's getting ruined by this, so don't do your hair if we do this job. This is what the old resistor looks like. I don't actually know why it broke over time, but you can see it's kind of frayed along the edges there. Um, it's quite warm as well, funny enough. Maybe it's because it's really hot today, but yeah, so that's the old one. Gonna get rid of that now, and in comes the new one. So you can see this one's a lot, as I showed you at the beginning, it's obviously. Uh, got a lot more stuff to it. It's not looking particularly dead. It's looking brand spanking new, to be honest. So uh, wherever our wiring loom's gone, let's grab that back. Next job, simply. It's just a simple job of uh, clipping it into place. You'll know when it's clipped because it will uh, be secure on both edges. Here you go, you can see on the edge there, it's clipped in. 
not going to come back out that's nice and then uh yeah these little edges should be clipped in so that's all i wanted to say about that now i'm gonna try and put it back in basically what i'm gonna do uh, i'll hold this in one hand for a second uh, i'm gonna grab this again turn it sideways push it back in through here like so oh hang on we're nearly there already and once you've got it in going in there sideways just want to feed the resistor part into its little hole again where it sits quite comfortably gives this a little spin around might require the wiring loom to be moved a little bit again as it was before turn it round so that it's facing downwards as such and then I'm going to pull it back into place and uh, I'm going to do that off camera because I can't get the pot but yeah you can see that I've pretty much gotten it back into place on camera which is uh, much more effort than you would expect. So there you can see I've popped it back into place it just takes a little bit of fiddling but once you have fiddled enough with it it does pop in really nicely so that's not too big a deal and now it's theoretically uh, that should be it done. Let's close this up and uh, let's give it a quick test. So we've uh, closed that bit. So engine on, currently got on zero. Oh, I'm a genius. For a moment I thought it wasn't working, but okay, so here we go. So this is on zero. Uh, one, you can barely really feel it. You can't really hear it, but you can tell it's on because this bad boy is moving right here. I do, if I turn it off again, it'll stop moving. So there he is, he's slowing down now. Turn him back onto one. There we go. Oh, I'm so happy with that. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's ideal. Uh, turn onto two. Got it going on two. He's moving around a little bit faster. Love that. Go on to three. Oh, look at that. It's blowing in the wind, boys. And onto four. And it's just a gale. So, yeah. Um, Cars with JB wasn't too today. I actually did the job. Also, I just swore, so no, that'll, that'll have been bleeped out, but what, you know what I mean. And in case any of you are really struggling to put it back together, I will now do the process of putting it back together as before. So key step here, just realized, make sure that this is open. If it's shut, this little thing here on the side pushes itself out. So this is just a key learn that I've just found. Um, but yeah, make sure that this is actually open because otherwise this just gets in the way on everything. So yeah, that's uh, one thing to look out for. So yeah, step one should just pop back into place. As in step one of putting it back together. Wow, look at me, I'm sweating. Step one of it should just pop back into place. Super easy. Uh, now I need to remember which of my torque screws were the ones to go in, which I think are these two. So now I'm going to put those back in. After step two, putting this bad boy back in, which I call everything a bad boy for some reason, but whatever. So once you've got that back in, obviously I'll finger tighten the first bit and then use this to do the rest. So you would use a useful one of these rather than a dead one, but you know what I mean. Gonna do these sort of ones in here, I'll show you. So gonna do the ones that were in this section here. So there was three of them across there, if you remember. And then I'm gonna put that back in like so, and then do the next three. So rather than explain the rest sections to you, I'll just do them and then you can see. So then, yeah, when I was saying about this one, actually, you just want to make sure, obviously, that these all line back up to pop back in nice and straight. And that pops in on the side there, as you just literally saw. Right, 
So that is literally it. <laughs> it's really not that difficult. There's a few fiddly bits in there that make it slightly more tough than you'd like it to be, but overall, not a bad job. Just literally started putting in more bits of it because I just realized that I need to fill up my glove box again. So final step, refill your glove box. The whole job took me around about half an hour in total, and that was me being slow because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it, it was really not that difficult. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, then hit that subscribe button. Uh, and hit the notification bell as well if you want to stay really up to date if you're if you're super keen for the cars with jb vibe then yeah hit that notification bell as well and yeah if you want to see the polo get fixed even further and obviously see the polo develop and flourish into the future and become some ridiculous beast that will suddenly be on like magazines and stance works and like petrolicious and all those great channels then hit the subscribe button click like oh, i've ruined this haven't i whatever basically Thank you very much for watching. I hope this was useful, all that great stuff. I'll see you in the next one. Listen.